So I watched The Many Saints of Newark, the Sopranos prequel. And, you know, I talk a lot about how the left dominates the culture and the right needs to get into the culture. And you might look at the culture and think, why can't we on the right have nice things like the people on the left? And the reason isn't because we're not creative and it's not because there are no good right wing artists. It's because we don't have an infrastructure of criticism. And this is a perfect example of how that works. Okay, The Many Saints of Newark is okay. It's fine. Uh, it, it's, the problem with it is, is it's not The Sopranos. The Sopranos was a work of genius. It was a work of art. And one of the, probably the pinnacle of the golden age of television. What made it a work of art, whether this is what David Chase, the creator, intended or not, it was not just about America as, as given to us in the person of a mobster at a point when the mob was actually on the downhill slide. And it opens up with him telling his psychiatrist uh, that he feels that he got into the business a little too late. And she says, yes, a lot of us feel that way, meaning all of us in America, that the peak had passed. But it was a brilliant depiction of how the corruption of the mobster and the corruption of our country and the decadence of our country were kind of interwoven. Even the fact that Soprano uh, went to a psychiatrist who couldn't understand that she couldn't help him because he was evil, that, that therapy will not cure evil, that there is a level of good and evil uh, above the therapeutic model. She couldn't understand that, though the show understood it and talked about it quite openly. Uh, that was part of the problem with America, and that was very brilliant. And the thing that was gave it this extra added level of brilliance, whether David Chase meant this or not, is that it was about television. Chase was a longtime television writer, and the thing about television is that it's different from movies and plays and novels, because in movies and plays and, and in a one-off novel, a character goes through an arc, right? He starts at one place, he faces a challenge that is perfectly suited to him, and that challenge somehow changes or defines him. So as I, I often put it, Othello, if Othello is given uh, Hamlet's problem, he solves it like that because Othello's a hothead. And if Hamlet is given Othello's problem, he can never solve it because he can never make up his mind. It makes a difference which person faces the challenge. But in TV, everything is different because in TV, the character continues and the character doesn't change, but the situation that he faces changes. So if he's a cop, he faces a different mystery every week, but he's still the same cop most of the time. And you'll notice in, in TV series, they'll try and refresh it by saying, oh, your favorite character is going to leave the show. But usually he or she doesn't leave the show because why would they get rid of a popular character? So The Sopranos is about the fact that people don't change. And the thing is, they face everything in the show. They face death. They face grief. They face happiness. They face success. They face therapy, which is supposed to change you. And they even uh, face Jesus at one point. There's one famous episode where they actually experience God, they never change. And that's a commentary on television, but it's also a commentary on the human condition. That is how a work of art works. Now, the problem with The Many Saints of Newark is we didn't need a prequel because the whole show was about what made Tony Soprano Tony Soprano. So we didn't need to see him as a young man in Newark. It's well made, but it's not a Soprano episode. It's in fact a second rate uh, Goodfellas. That's really what it is. It's a second rate Scorsese picture. Uh, it, you know, it kind of has the historical vibe. It's very lovingly recreated. It's entertaining. It's not bad. You know, I thought it was fine. It's a, it's a B version of Scorsese. And, it, you know, it, it, and like I said, it looks great. It has a terrific central performance. The guy who plays Dickie Moltisante uh, is named uh, Alessandro Nivola. He does a terrific job as kind of Tony Soprano's mentor and uncle. But, you know, it's just like you've seen it before. If you've seen Goodfellas, you've seen the better version of it. What bothers me about it was the reaction from right-wing critics, because so many of them, some of whom I happen to know personally, came out and said, oh, the Sopran this just proves that The Sopranos was overrated. The Sopranos was no good. The Sopranos... Yeah, that's because you don't know anything about what you're looking at. We do not have critics who are either artists or critics. We have people who do politics and then comment on art. That's not the way you build an infrastructure that supports great art. We don't have awards. We don't have magazines. We judge art on the basis of its politics. That's not how you do it. What you do is you have people who love the arts, who understand how a story is told, who have either been in the business, as I have, or have studied the business, as a good critic does, uh, like Christian Toto does, and can comment on 
the quality of something outside of what they think the politics of it are or, or how they're offended by it or how much nudity it has in it or how it offends their sensibility or doesn't do what they want it to do in the culture. A work of art stands on its own. It does what it does. And our critics do not understand that, as you could tell from their reaction to uh, the many saints of newer. Like I said, it's fine. It's a good show. It's not The Sopranos. It's what we call in Hollywood a piece of business. A piece of business is something you do because you think you can make a little extra money off it. Uh, and, you know, obviously The Sopranos is well remembered. It's beloved. It's a show that was really represented the pinnacle of the golden age of TV, which has now come to its close. And so it was kind of had some nostalgic power. You know, who knows why David Chase decided to do it? Maybe for the coin, maybe for the prestige, maybe he was tired of being sidelined. Who knows? Maybe he felt he had a real story to tell. I don't want to talk about it. It's not about his motives. It's just that it's just a piece of business, something that would draw people on the strength of the name of that TV show. But what really bothered me about it was these right wing so-called critics who aren't really critics coming out of the woodwork and dissing The Sopranos because they didn't understand what it was about or how it worked. It was a deeply moral show, despite all the cursing, nudity, and violence in it. It was a deeply moral show with a deeply moral sensibility that criticized, uh, that was culture critical of America in ways that conservatives should agree with, actually. Uh, and it was brilliantly, brilliantly acted from the every uh, step, every step of the way. Many Saints of Newark, if you like mob, I got to say, I love all mob pictures. It would be hard to make a mob picture bad enough for me not to like it. So I enjoyed it, but it's not The Sopranos.